Call to order, this is the ninth regular meeting of the 2011-2012 Common Council, and as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read us the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. Take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase, just take the first step. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Belt. Here. Boren. Here. Carlson. Here. Decker. Here. Hammond. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Matichak. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Raisler. Here. Samson. Here. Van Akron. Here. Vanderweel. Here. And Versi. Here. 15 present. We have a quorum. Now if we can all rise and join Alderman Hammond in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Don. Welcome. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting, President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mayor. I move that we approve the previous minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. The date of today's date, honorable members of the Common Council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Joel Hammond to be appointed to the Law and Licensing Committee and the Group Health and Wellness Committee to fill the unexpired term of Mark Hanna, whose term expires 4-16-2012. Kevin Matichek to be appointed to the Industrial Development Commission to fill the unexpired term of Mark Hanna, whose term expires 4-16-2012. Jody Vanderweel to move from Vice Chair to Chair of the Law and Licensing Committee and Julie Koth to Vice Chair. Jody Vanderweel to be appointed to the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee to fill the unexpired term of Mark Hanna, whose term expires 4 16 2012, signed by the Mayor. President Redflesh. Uh, Sue, do we need suspension on this one? Yes, please. Okay. I move that we suspend the rules. Second. We have a motion to suspend and a second. Uh, is there anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? The rules are suspended. Please continue. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, move that we confirm the, uh, the above uh, appointments. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the appointments under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call. Roll call, please. Belt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Matichek. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Versi. Aye. 15 eyes. Motion carries. Public forum. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first on our list would be Milt Storm. Is Milt here? I don't see him. Okay. Next, Next on the list would be Dave Colton. Is Dave here? <clears throat> if you'd like to come up to the mic, Dave. Hey, And Dave, can you give me your home address, please? 717 Detroit Street. 717 Detroit. Street. Yep. Sheboygan Falls, Wisconsin. And you will have five minutes, sir. Say that again? You will have five minutes, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Go ahead. Um, my name is Dave Colton. I live in Sheboygan Falls. And I'm here tonight really to give you a brief history of, of um, how this came to be. About seven years ago, my, part, my current partner started a program here in Sheboygan and was contracted with the city to approach the seagull problem. Concurrently, I was doing the same thing in Sheboygan Falls with geese. They had a huge problem, 600 geese in the park, couldn't play on the, the ball fields, the picnic areas were fouled, and I approached it with two terriers and took care of the problem and had some great success. I felt that I could take on a larger city like Sheboygan and uh, came to a town council meeting, met my current partner, and shortly after that we started a business. And what I'm here to do tonight is really discuss the ongoing problem with the seagulls here in Sheboygan. Uh, we have estimated between eight to 10,000 herring and ringbill gulls 
that are infesting the city. Um, they're following the beaches and the marinas. Uh, we think that the main culprit right now of beach closers up and down and throughout the Great Lakes system. Every morning there's approximately two to 3,000 gulls on North Beach alone. Uh, their scat is full of E. coli, uh, histoplasmosis, and it's quite a health risk. The downtown area, uh, the rooftops right now, and have been for the last several weeks, are being overwhelmed with gulls. Some are nesting, some are through nesting. Um, I have per personally witnessed where feathers were rolling into a business uh, that was serving food, and this is a health risk. Uh, there's, a, there's a local church here where the play, playground equipment is completely covered with seagull scat. The uric acid that seagulls leave behind when they leave can destroy roofs within months. I mean totally destroy roofs, undermine them quickly at a huge expense to the owner. And this situation is not unique to Sheboygan. It is going up and down the western side of Lake Michigan for sure. Um, Communities all along this lake are experiencing this problem, except for one, and that is Kiwani, where we have currently a citywide abatement program and have had for a couple years now. Uh, we have had techniques that are 100% effective for rooftops, for communities, for beaches, etc. Um, we can clear this entire downtown area right now and for years to come. We can take care of the beaches, we can do a citywide abatement program. We have the technology to do that. When Jeff and I started, it was a very hands-on approach. Every, when, we were, when we were doing our abatement techniques, we had to be there. We have developed a system where it's a walk away, standalone system that can work day after day, hour after hour, week after week, and keep businesses clear of the seagull problem communities clear of the seagull problem. Um, we did experience a setback with the city, and this was five years ago, and it simply was from a misquote. Uh, we were interviewed, and it, it was stated that our program cost $200,000 to remove the gulls. In actuality, which was left off, that would have included 12 rain gardens, and we would have dressed all the stormwater detention ponds that ultimately flow into Lake Michigan. And again, we think that's a big part of some of the beach closures here. Um, so we don't want any setbacks with the, with the city anymore. Um, that would have achieved a blue wave rating for Sheboygan, which Racine, the city of Racine has achieved by putting in rain gar gardens and approaching their seagull and their, their goose problem. If anybody wish, we do have a, a local unit here at a Sheboygan business, and we have it up on YouTube. And uh, you can search for seagull removal and dispersal, and you will see our system at work. It started with between, I would say, five to 700 gulls, many of which were nesting. This was a business that served food. And within a week, they were seagull free with our system upon their roof. So we have solutions. We're local. We live right here in Sheboygan County, and we're ready. So if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them with my remaining minutes. Or minute. Five seconds. Five seconds? <laughs> <laughs> How was that Sorry. good timing? That's good timing. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you, sir. Next. Uh, next on the list would be Joanne Scribner. Is Joanne here, please? Joanne, can I have your home address? Three Seneca Trail. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Mayor Bob Ryan has admitted to being an alcoholic. He said that he is an alcoholic seeking to improve. Mayor Ryan said in an, in an interview on WHBL radio, quote, I do not blame the council for asking for my resignation. What I did was indefensible. I'm not proud of it. I'm an alcoholic. I've known that I've been one for the majority of my adult life. It's part of my history. I've been successful in spite of it, and I will continue to be successful. Alcohol has never affected 
the way I do my job. Alcohol has affected my personal life. I have never, ever walked into a council meeting, a city meeting, or my office under the influence of alcohol." Unquote. People like Sheboygan Common Council President, President Eric Rindfleisch and former Sheboygan Mayor Richard W. Susha are asking for Mayor Ryan to resign or to be removed from office. Is there a concerted effort on the part of Rindfleisch supporters to boot Mayor Ryan out of office? so that Eric Rindfleisch can become mayor of Sheboygan? Is there a concerted, concerted effort on the part of Democrats or liberals to remove Mayor Ryan from office? Is there a concerted effort on the part of the religious, church-going, those who are not truly Christian crowd, who are embarrassed by Mayor Ryan's conduct? Are all of the above working together to remove Mayor Ryan from office? Thanks to camera phones, which I believe are an invasion of people's privacy when used in the wrong way, public officials and private citizens can be caught in the act of behaving badly in public. I do not believe that the person who videoed Mayor Ryan behaving badly in Brennan's bar back in 2009 and then sent that video out on YouTube, which was then picked up by David Letterman and Jay Leno, that person did no great or wonderful thing for the city of Sheboygan. Where is the public outcry against that person who invaded Mayor Ryan's privacy? Where does he or she get to be off the hook? Maybe that person should be prosecuted and sent to jail. What about the bartenders who keep on pouring the beer or mixed drinks until their customers are drunk or slumped over at the bar? They keep on pouring the alcohol until their drunk customers get into a vehicle and kill themselves or others in a highway crash. Where is the public outcry against the bartenders? Why are they not prosecuted and sent to jail? Where is the public outcry against alcohol? Why do people think that they cannot have fun unless they have a beer, martini, or margarita in their hand? Why does the Sheboygan press continue to focus on what bar were you at on Friday night? Why do Sheboygan festivals continue to serve beer? Does the word clueless come to mind? Anyone who provides beer and alcohol in the grocery stores, liquor stores, mini marts, gas stations, restaurants, taverns, and at festivals, you should all hold yourselves personally responsible for the problem of alcoholism. I blame each and every one of those people who have anything to do with the beer and alcohol industry, the killer of good morals, the killer of marriages and family life, the killer of common sense conduct, and the killer of people through drunk driving accidents and the heart and liver diseases caused by alcohol intake. Are you listening? Larry is distributing. Beer truck drivers, those of you who sell alcohol, and bartenders. Now, for those of you common council members in this room who think that you are perfect and beyond reproach, here are some questions for you. Have you ever said nasty or mean things about some other person? Have you ever been drunk? Have any of you ever drinking, uh, driven your vehicle even though you knew that you had too many beers or mixed drinks? Have any of you ever had sex without being married? Have any of you ever lived with your girlfriend or boyfriend not being married? Have any of you ever watched porn on late night Cinemax, Showtime, HBO, Stars, Pay Per View, etc.? Have any, of you, have any of you ever lied to protect yourself? Have any of you ever used bad language, swear words, used God's name in vain, or mistakenly and wrongly thinking that God's last name is damn? Have any of you ever taken something that didn't belong to you? Have any of you ever thought that you were better than someone else? Have, you ever, have any of you ever hit someone in anger? Have any of you ever cheated on a test or on your spouse? None of you Sheboygan Common Council members is perfect. When you point your finger at me and Ra Mayor Ryan Excuse for his me, shortcomings. Joanne, would you like your additional minute? Yes. So move. Second. Go ahead. There, Go ahead. There are then three, when you point your fingers at Mayor Ryan, there are three fingers pointing back at you for your own shortcomings. 
I support Mayor Bob Ryan. I do not support a resolution for his resignation or removal from office. He has done far too many good things for the city of Sheboygan. He has made many good business decisions for our city and Sheboygan is going in the right direction. People were concerned about the empty store buildings on Taylor Heights. Now Festival Foods is being built. The Shukard far Farm, there are plans for businesses to come in there. American Orthodontics is going to now inhabit the uh, vacated Thomas Industry Building in Washington Avenue. There's a new auto zone being built on the corner of South Business Drive and Wilson Avenue. Kmart store is gone, but pick and save will soon be there in the near future. Taylor Park now has a nice apartment building. I've seen Mayor Bob Ryan doing good things in public like frying brats, hamburgers, and hot dogs at the Little Red Schoolhouse, Gateway, neighborhood picnic. At the cleanup day, he was proclaiming at the Sheboygan Spaceport rockets for students for school's day and joking around with astronaut Michael J. Foreman at Blue Harbor taking a ride with Chad Peleshek to some city site for some business development, explaining to me in his office how TIFs work. Excuse me, Joanne. I'm sorry to interrupt, but your time is up. Thank you, Mayor Ryan, for doing a wonderful job. I pray that you will continue to be the full-time mayor of this city. Thank you, Joanne. Next. All right, next on the list would be Tom Bowers. Is Tom here? have your home address please 2120 North 36th Street and you will have five minutes sir five minutes yes thank you the information that I'm about to um, give to you tonight is not going to be very nice regarding mr. Ryan you notice I don't address him as mayor Ryan because he's been a disgrace of this community for the past two and a half years to give you a little background, originally when Mr. Ryan ran for mayor, I backed him. I attended the Briscoe Grill. I contributed to his campaign. And I also took out a uh, yard sign. After 30 days and talking to people in the community, I took the yard sign down. I decided. This wasn't a gentleman that I wanted to back. Someone told me, I think they emailed me, the acronym for this administration is ASS. Arrogance, stubborn, self-centered. Mr. Ryan, there's been six mayors for you. I've known three of them personally. Mayor Brown, honorable man. Mayor Schneider, I was his campaign manager. And Mayor Shusha, who I served 14 years on the Board of Review. I did not know uh, Mayor Schneider, uh, Dick Schneider. Um, Mayor Schramm, I, I knew as an acquaintance, but not as a friend. Then they had Mr. Perez, who I did not know at all. To regress a little bit, we go back to August 2010. Mr. Ryan called me in, in, into his office. What for? I don't know. But before he could answer anything, I asked him, number one, because of his behavior, number one, to give up his city vehicle. That not bode well with Mr. Ryan. Number two, I asked him to take a drug test, which had been passed by council before, but was never followed up on. Number three, I asked him to be monitored by the council as we so passed that resolution in 2009. He went berserk and ordered me out of his office. I wish I would have stayed because I would like to see how he would have handled it, but I had an appointment. <clears throat> After that, uh, I believe Mr. Ryan's behavior is not an alcohol problem. It's a behavior problem. 
and I don't understand how he can put his family through this, especially his children. Now you're going to be asked tonight to pass a resolution, or maybe it'll be postponed, I don't know. But if there ever was a chance for a city administrator, now is the time. Because what he has done in two and a half years, the other six mayors didn't do in 50 years. Now, with the passing of the resolution tonight, which I don't know if it's going to take place or not, but I'd like to end with this information. In view of Mr. Ryan's performance, and if he does not resign from office, which I know he won't, he's too arrogant, he's too stubborn, and he's too self-centered. On behalf of your children, your wife has said that she'll stand by you. That's her situation, but your children don't have their choice. If you do not resign, I have information pertaining to the current lawsuit being brought against the city of Sheboygan that I will be in contact with with Angela Payne's attorney. Thank you. Okay, next on the list is Steve Sommerfeld. Steve? Steve, can I have your home address, please? Uh, 1627 North Fifth Street. Okay, go ahead, you'll have five minutes. All right, thank you. Uh, Wisconsin Administration Code Subchapter 11, Chapter 111. Employers, labor organizations, employment agencies, and licensing agencies that deny employment opportunities and discriminate employment against properly qualified individuals solely because of their age, race, creed, color, disability, marital status, sex, national origin, ancestry, sexual orientation, arrest record, conviction record, military service, not youth or non-youth of lawful products off the employer's premises during non-working hours or declining attending a meeting or to participate in communication about religious matters or political matters, deprive those individuals of the earnings that are necessary to maintain a just and decent standard of living. Annotate, this act protects all employees, including prospective and de facto employees, 67 Attorney General 169. Now, you may wonder why I've read aloud the law, that law to you today. The reason is, on July 27, 2011, my girlfriend, Cassandra Gill, came before the Law and Licensing Committee for a pawnbroker's license for Patriot Pawn and Loan. My girlfriend, Cassandra Gill, was so squeaky clean that the police department told her that they thought they were, that we were trying to pull a fast one with the city. So the police department instead decided to crucify myself and my friend, William Skirvin, in front of the Licensing Committee because, unlike her, we do have arrest records. So the Law and Licensing Committee voted to deny her application because she was going to employ us in the pawn shop. She was told by one alderman during these proceedings that they would have no problem granting her this license if we weren't going to be employed by her. So I'm here today to try and defend myself in front of all of you since I wasn't given that chance during that committee meeting. First, I'd like to start by telling you a little bit about myself, then I'll get into details of my involvement with this business. First, I'm 36 years old, a single father of four great children. I'm a Marine Corps veteran and a veteran of Wisconsin Army National Guard honorably discharged from both. I was a contractor for the United States Army on two separate occasions in which I spent almost two years in Iraq. I have also recently been offered another job to go to Afghanistan and repair the AMRAP vehicles over there. I must add I do hold security clearance and have passed FBI background investigations to do these things. The point I'm trying to make is not that I'm a perfect individual because I'd be the first to tell you that is not the case. I've made mistakes in my past, mistakes I'm not proud of. I'm guilty of being a bad driver. I'm guilty of getting into a fight to protect my developmentally disabled brother. But the one thing I'd like to stress is my, my mistakes are in my past, and my past is just that, my past. It has no bearing on my actions today. If anything, it has made me a better person. Well, as me in a nutshell, now I'd like to try and put the rest of the idea of myself, my girlfriend, Cassandra, and friend Bill of somehow conspiring to pull a fast one on the city. First of all, if any of us were trying to be secretive about anything, that this committee would have never heard of our names until the license was granted. Instead, you could go to just about any department here in City Hall and ask them who I am, and I'm sure they could tell you my name and for which business I represent. From day one, when my girlfriend, Cassandra, went in front of the Law Licensing Committee, at which time the license application was put on hold because of proposed changes to the city's pawnbroking ordinance, I made no secret on my involvement with this business. At that time, I introduced myself to Detective Kurt Zempel, and I told him I, I had nothing to hide. Four to five days later, Cassandra and myself met with Detective Zempel, as well as the supervisor, in which we went over all the city laws regarding pawnbroking, and at which time he taught me how to use the city's new pawn tracking software, Newpers. After our meeting concluded, we gave Detective Zempel and Supervisor a tour of the shop and asked Detective Zempel two questions. 
First, will you be recommending us for a license? And second, if it would be all right if we put a sign in the window stating that anticipating grand opening day because of all the interest from the public we have been receiving. He responded yes to both questions, but stipulated that he wants to make sure that we put a sign in our store as well as exterior, letting the public know that all items found are processed through the Sheboygan Police Department, which we had done immediately. I must add that Detective Zempel did inform me of the city's last experience with a pawn shop in the city of Sheboygan. All valid reasons to be cautious as not to repeat history. I assured Detective Zempel that we would, have, we would not have any gray areas when it comes to the following, following the letter of the law. I also told him that he, as well as his officers, were welcome in the business any time. In fact, we encouraged them to come in. He told me that a pawn shop would be an asset to the city and find stolen merchandise, as well as arresting criminals, which I agreed with him on. We shook hands, and it was the last I heard from him until July 26, the day before the Laws Licensing Committee was scheduled to meet, at which point he called my girlfriend, Cassandra, and told her that they changed their mind and they weren't going to recommend us because somehow or someone felt we were trying to pull a fast one. These are questions I have, I have heard. Why has Steve been doing so much of the work? Why did I see business cards with just Bill and Steve's name on them? First of all, I should tell you our relationship to each other. Cassandra Gill is my girlfriend, Bill is my best friend, Bill's girlfriend is Cassandra's best friend, so we're a very tight family. I've been doing most of the work because I'm the only person that is unemployed right now. Bill works third shift at Rockline, Cassandra works second shift at Sargento. So I'm the only person that really has time to do these things right now. The way we have the business organized is that myself and Bill are faces for the customers. Cassandra handles the logistics, paperwork, bills, etc. Brenda's, Bill's girlfriend handles advertising, graphic art, and promotions. So that is why the business cards by the ca cash register only had me and Bill's name on them because of the danger of the business. We felt it would be safer that way. And one of the biggest questions is why Cassandra was the person applying for the license. That question's answer is very simple because she is the de facto owner of this business. Without her, this business would just be a dream. She financed everything, and if you're wondering how she could do that, she happened to be one of the lucky Sargento employees that won the Powerball Lottery four years back. I hope I have answered any doubts or questions you may or may not have had so you can make a fair and balanced decision regarding our character and regarding this business before you vote on it today. My friend Bill is also present if you may have some questions for him. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, that's it. Okay, that is all for public forum. Um, we now ha are going to have the swearing in of uh, the alder person elect in district number seven, future alderman Joel Hammon. Joel, if you can come forward. After me, I please state your name. I, Joel Hammond. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. The Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office of older person. Of the office of older person. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> With the heat in these council chambers, jackets off is perfectly acceptable tonight, so just so everybody knows. Come on, Don. I'll get there. Okay, uh, Mayor's announcements. I don't have any formal announcements this evening. Um, however, I would like to speak on uh, one subject that I'm sure is the foremost on everybody's mind, including my own. I have uh, sat before this council on three different occasions now. This is the third over the same issue. That issue being alcohol. Uh, that issue being my abuse of it. And that issue 
being the thing that my personal life gets in the way of my administration. I have sat here before and asked for the council's forgiveness. I've asked for my, sit my family's forgiveness. I've asked for the citizen's forgiveness. I don't feel any different this time. I have been working, as you all know, um, to be a sober individual for six years now. Six years. It's a long time. I'm successful most of the time. Sometimes I'm not, and those are the times that make it into the newspaper. I don't pre-plan going out and getting drunk. If I did, if I could, sure as heck wouldn't do it around this area. When I went out to Elkhart Lake last Friday evening, I had no intention of matters happening the way they did. I went out, I had a lot of stress. I'm not making excuses. Everything here is my fault. Mine and mine alone. Nobody else's. I went out, I had some dinner, I put one drink in my hand, and it was all over. It's inexcusable, it's indefensible, it's shameful, it's embarrassing. I can take it myself. I've been here. I feel like I'm getting to be a pro at this stuff. My family doesn't deserve it. My wife doesn't. My children definitely don't. My mother, my brothers, my sisters, they do not. But it's a part of who I am. Something I work on every day of my life is to be a better person. Every day. Sometimes I'm successful. Most of the time I'm successful. 99% of the time I'm successful. Sometimes I'm not. And I apologize for that. There's no excuse. There's no excuses. You can't say, oh, I'm an alcoholic. It's a disease, therefore I can get away with this. No, it's not an excuse. But I am one, and I've known I've been one for a long time, and I've been working on making myself a better person for the last six years. Unfortunately, I haven't been totally successful, but I'm still working on it. And I will always work on it. People have said you need to go away and get yourself some help. My family is my help. My job, my position as mayor in my city is my help. For me to go away to somewhere and sit and stare at walls is not going to cure me. I'm going to be going into an intensive outpatient program. I've done it before. And I'll do it again. I can do it in the evenings, I can do it on the weekends, and I can continue to run this city. I have never, ever walked into these council chambers, walked into a city meeting, walked into my office under the influence of alcohol, ever. And I've heard there's rumors out there to that effect. All rumors stink, remember that. That's why they're rumors, they're not fact. The fact of the matter is I went out, I got drunk, I made an ass of myself, and I embarrass this city. That's a fact. That is a fact. For that, I apologize again. I can only apologize so much, though. I have to get on with the future. You have a resolution this evening calling for my resignation. I have put on in front of all of you aldermen a letter. I will not read it. 
I do have copies for the press if you'd like it afterward. Put in front of you a letter that states that if I ever consume alcohol again and there is evidence so, reasonably certain evidence, not that somebody walks up and says, hey, I saw this guy with a beer, he's got to quit. Reasonably certain evidence, I will walk away. This is not a legally binding document, as our city attorney will tell you. It can't be because by statute, you can't just say if this happens, I will sacrifice my office. People will say you said this before. I think I might have. I think uh, in 2010, this seems to happen. July is not a very good month for me. Um, seems like July is always my bad month of my life. Next July won't be, I guarantee you. I love this city more than anybody does. Some of you may not believe that. You say, why do you deserve to keep being mayor? Because I give a damn about this city. The city is going places. Do I feel bad about embarrassing this city and myself and the Common Council and especially my family? You're right, I do. I do. But I also have a lot to offer this city and its citizens, and I will continue to do so. I will continue to do so. And I will always continue to do so. I can only ask for your forgiveness so many times it sounds like a broken record. I can only ask for my family's forgiveness so many times. I can get back on my program. And I can get back with my life and with the business of this city. And that's all I ask of you. I'm not a perfect person. I'm the furthest thing from a per perfect person you'll ever find in your life. I admit, I have a tendency to be arrogant. I've told a lot of people that. I can be belligerent. When I'm intoxicated, I can be a downright jerk. And I know that. And that's why I don't belong drinking. And that's why I pledge that I will not in the future. And if I do, you can appoint a different mayor. No questions asked. But I have something to offer this city. And I will continue to do so. When it comes time for discussion of the resolution of my resignation, I will not participate. I will ask President Rindfleisch to take my chair at that time. President Rindfleisch, you can run the chair during that resolution. All I ask is that you allow me to be me, which is me. It's not the alcoholic me, it's me. Bob Ryan, the mayor, you allow me to be me and do my job and do what we need to do for the city together. We don't want to get into the, did this happen, did that happen? Um, we don't want to get into, look at this video of this guy or that guy. We don't want to do that in this city. It's not what we're about. I'm not going to play the game. That's not what we're about. We're about taking care of our citizens. We're about revitalizing our neighborhoods. We're about getting people jobs. We're about developing our city. We're about the future. We're not about everybody's personal lives and are they perfect or are they not? I just ask that we can work together in the future for the future of the city. Thank you.
Consent agenda, 9-1 through 9-13, President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mayor. We move on the consent agenda. All report of officers be accepted and placed on file. All report of committees be accepted and adopted. And the resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. We have a motion and a second on the <coughs> consent agenda under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. I forgot him already. Mm -hmm. Hammond? Aye. <laughs> Heidemann? Aye. Todd? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Samson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 16 ayes. <clears throat> Motion carries. Reports of Officers 2914 by the City Plan Commission recommending approval of the request from the Wisconsin Naval Ship Association requesting an extension on the first right of refusal so that they may complete the final stages of closing on the Alliant property. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and file under discussion. There is none. Roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Carlson? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 915, by the development manager requesting an exception be granted to accomplish the dredging work as provided in section 6672.7, Article 3 of the Municipal Code, entitled Noise. Alderman Sampson. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and placed on file. Alderman Versi, would you like to third that one? Yeah, I would. Okay, and we have a third there too. Sorry, Alderman Versi, I didn't know that was, uh, that was yours. Motion and a second to accept and place on file under discussion. Your Honor, if you could. Uh, Attorney McLean. Uh, brought this up in the past. Uh, same thing with the last document. Uh, I think need to be clearer as, as to these motions. Accept and file. Uh, to me, it doesn't say you're agreeing or disagreeing. You're accepting the communication and you're putting it on file. Uh, I think the, the, the appropriate motion would be to accept and adopt the report of committee or the report of officer if, if the intent is to do what is being requested or proposed. Um, otherwise, I think it's somewhat ambiguous as to what the intent is if you just accept the communication and file it. Just a suggestion. Um, Sir, could you possibly flip that switch off on that air conditioner back there? Thank you. Appreciate it. It's a little cold in here. Not that we're trying to smoke everybody out here, but it's uh, you can't hear very well. So we uh, we need a motion to uh, accept and adopt, Steve. That's what I would recommend. Yeah. Yes. So move. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. There is none. Roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Samson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 916 by the Redevelopment Authority thanking Don Sveeton Jr. of DNM Plumbing and Heating Company for donating the installation of a water supply extension for use of groups sponsoring events held in the South Pier District. RDA, Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I move the reporter committee be accepted and filed. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and file under discussion. We have Alderman Hammond, please. Um, 
I would, I would like to thank um, Don Sveeton um, for their work. Um, they put about $1,500 worth of plumbing work down there, I believe was the, was the final number. Um, and that helped this past weekend's Festival Lakeshore weekend for uh, kids, I believe it's called, um, go up pretty smoothly. So I would like to formally thank them um, for their efforts in doing that. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Uh, Don is also a member of our uh, City Plan Commission, I believe. Or maybe this is Junior, maybe this is the son. And the Redevelopment, and the redevelopment Authority. There we go. Okay, we have a motion and a second under discussion. <laughs> Too many Dons. Too many Dons. Okay. Uh, if there is no further discussion, roll call, please. We can do it all eyes. Oh, we can do it all eyes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Sweeten. Okay, 917 through 922 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 3923 by Alderman Versi stating that the city of Sheboygan will not bill the former fire battalion chief William Wildman or his family for a transfer from Frederick Hospital to Sharon S. Richardson Hospice. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to move to suspend the rules. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second to suspend the rules under discussion. Is there any, anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? Alderman Hammond, would you like an explanation? Yes, please. Explanation behind it is just to get this um, to our billing department, our new billing service. It's already been billed out, but it needs to get to the billing service sooner than later in that manner. Is there anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? Rules are suspended. Please continue. I'd like to move to make the resolution and put upon its passage. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? Chief Herman would like to say a word. Alderman Versi, is that what you were calling for? No, but go ahead. Okay. Chief. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, while I understand and really appreciate the sentiment behind this uh, resolution, as does, I'm sure, uh, the family of Battalion Chief Wildman, um, I know he was very proud uh, to take his last ride home in a Sheboygan Fire Department vehicle. Um, I know this, the family was deeply moved, um, and I think um, our two firefighters that actually went and did the transport were uh, moved more than they thought. Um, but I would caution you um, to move uh, slowly on this. We are setting a precedent. Um, the allowed Medicare amount that we would collect um, is more than double covers the cost of the transport. However, I would say that um, a retired firefighter should not be treated any different than a retired city hall worker, uh, DPW worker, or any other city resident. Thank you, Chief. Under further discussion, Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in this instance, it is warranted for someone who's put in 32 years of service to our fire department, headed up the dispatch center, and done a lot for our city. It's not setting precedence because not many people go through what he's gone through. So it's not setting precedence for any, any other city employee. It's the extent of his time, and he, he earned a free trip back to his hospice center, which, if I may add, I don't know if anybody already knows, he also died the following day. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Under further discussion, Ernie McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I think it would be setting precedent, and I guess I uh, would caution the council before uh, you do something like this. I recall, I go back, uh, when I first started for the city, the police department ran the ambulance. And we had a lot of uncollectible bills, uncollectible. Uh, it got to the point where waivers were granted uh, in numerous cases on billing. Uh, I, I would caution you, if you're going to be in the ambulance business, uh, I think you've got to run it as a business and uh, not start granting waivers based on uh, whether they're a city employee or the famous person or whatever. It's certainly within your prerogative to do that, but I just would caution you to think twice before uh, approving this and saying, well, it's not, not a precedent because uh, you know, he was a battalion chief for X number of years. Well, uh, the next one's gonna come in and you're gonna get them uh, when word spreads that uh, make a plea to the council 
uh, I can get my ambulance bills waived. Um, I would suggest that if you're going to do that, uh, you may want to refer to the committee and, and just give it a little more discussion. But uh, uh, I think part of the problem we had with the ambulance in the police department was uh, it got very political and people uh, could get waivers from their bills. Now granted, that's back in the days when the city was providing basic level service. I think the bills were $50 flat, flat rate. Uh, and it wasn't a big deal financially, but uh, it came to the point where uh, there were an awful lot of bills that weren't collected. So that's just my word of caution. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Then I guess, could we refer this back to the committee for further, I mean, uh, for further discussion, just to, to talk about this a little bit more? Because I guess I don't think that all of us completely understand what the, you know, what, uh, what is going on here with this. And uh, I guess I'd like to hear a, a discussion at the committee level. Thank you. Did this come through Finance Alderman Hammond, or? This hasn't come to any committee yet, I don't It hasn't, okay. Um, if somebody would like to make that motion, uh, that could be done. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we refer this maybe to the Finance Committee for further? Second. Or? We have a motion and a second to refer to finance under discussion on the referral only. Any discussion on the referral? All, eyes on the referral. Mm -hmm. All in favor of referring to finance, state aye. 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 Opposed? To finance it goes. Okay, moving on to 924 by Alder Persons Born, Carlson, Sampson, and Versi stating that the city of Sheboygan shall not allow the mayor to drive any city-owned vehicles in response to recent events. Alderman Versi? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion and a second to suspend the rules. Please continue. I'd like to move to make the resolution upon its passage. Um, we need to have discussion on suspension of the rules first. Is anybody opposed to the rules being suspended or would like an explanation? Alder person, Alderman Matichek? Uh, the, the reason of suspended? Suspend the rules to get this taken care of in a timely manner and not uh, wait for two more weeks for it to come back to council. Under discussion on suspension of the rules, Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a, just a question, what, what committees would this then possibly be forwarded to <coughs> for discussion? Good if question. It went to a committee, I'm sorry. I would assume probably PPNS or strategic, strategic fiscal planning. You know, truthfully, I'm not opposed to the rules being suspended on this myself, but it's up to you folks. We're still discussing the suspension of the rules. Um, is there anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? That's the first thing. Is there anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? The rules are suspended. Alderman Versi, please continue. I'd like to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Uh, I'll refer to this as, as, a, as a city employee instead of the mayor, and um, hopefully our attorney can help clarify. Uh, number one, unless we're looking at appointing a driver for um, a city employee that we choose not to let drive our city vehicles, I believe we're going to have to pay a mileage, correct? Yes. And if the city employee were to choose to take their own vehicle and we're paying mileage, if they're involved in an accident, we're going to pay for that claim or whatever it may be as long as they're on duty? Yes, if it was in the scope of employment, yes. Okay, so I guess that's why I'm, I'm a little not confused with this. I understand the point behind it. Um, unfortunately, I, I, I think that um, obviously I won't support it because of the fact that it's just the same as if the city employee were driving his own vehicle instead of the city. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Uh, Alderman Hammond? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think the only thing I might want to try to correct, and this is just the anal retent of accountant in me coming out, is 
mileage is not a guaranteed reimbursement. Um, it's you know, to be determined by the contractual uh, obligation. So um, that wouldn't be guaranteed, but your point is well taken about uh, the remainder of it. If I may interject here, seeing as I am this city employee, um, I have never driven a city vehicle under the influence of alcohol, period. Um, and if anybody has proof otherwise, please, please bring it forward now. It hasn't happened. I'm not in danger of having a drink tomorrow morning. It's not going to happen. I have never gotten a drunken a DUI or OWI in my life. I have not gotten a speeding ticket in 30 years. In my opinion, this is nothing but a petty move on the part of a few aldermen. That is my opinion. Show me where I have done anything wrong in a city vehicle or my private vehicle for that matter. Please do. Next, we have Alderman Hem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I do have to question singling out the mayor uh, on this instance. Uh, no records, no uh, uh, legal files made on this one, no citations issued by officers. At that point in time, singling him out sounds to me we'd have to apply it to everyone who drives a city vehicle at that point in time who's ever had a, an adult beverage. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Uh, Alderman Raisler, did you have more? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, I think we go back to the heart of the issue, and, and again, I'm using city employee instead of the mayor, but, <laughs> um, and that is the, the fact of someone drinking and, and driving a city-owned vehicle. We do have a policy um, for the city of Sheboygan regarding the alcohol um, use while, on, while working, uh, which would be the same time when that person would be driving a motor vehicle owned by the city. And that prohibits them actually someone from coming to work drinking or under the influence of a controlled substance. Thus, it would also cover the um, use of the vehicle, I would hope. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Alderman Versi, did you buzz in? No, that was before. Is there any further discussion? There's no further discussion. Roll call, please. And I vote, and I vote will uh, not allow this city employee to drive city vehicles. Hammond. No. Heideman. No. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. No. Matichak. Nope. That was a no? Nope. Thank you. Rinfleisch. No. Raisler. No. Sampson. Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? No. Decker? No. And Haman? No. Six eyes, ten no's. Motion fails. Moving on. 925 lies over. 926 to be referred. 927, at this point, I will ask President Ridfleisch to come up. I will not participate in this discussion. And uh, I will go to my office or watch in the back here. And uh, I will return after this discussion is finished and a vote is taken. President Ridfleisch, please take the chair. Board. <clears throat> Thank you, President Rinfleisch. Uh, I ask for suspension of the rules on this document, please. Second. I'll actually need to read the document first, if you won't mind. Pardon me? I'll need to read the document then at first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Document number 927 by the Committee of the Whole, <laughs> stating they're upset with the mayor's actions and recommend that a resolution be drafted to ask the mayor to resign in order to focus on his addiction and his family to allow the city to move forward and to pass the attached resolution. First reading. Alderman Board. 
Thank you, President Rinfleisch. I make a motion that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted and the attached resolution be put upon its passage. Uh, prior to that, is there, uh, we did have the motion for to suspend. Uh, was there any second. Um, motion made and second to suspend? Was there any discussion on suspension? Is there any discussion or objection to suspension? Okay. Uh, now we have the motion made and seconded to put upon its passage. Thank you, Alderman Warren. Is there any discussion? Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, President Rinfleisch. Um, I, I'd been looking into this a little bit, and there were a couple questions that I had uh, with the procedures that we have in place. And we're talking about uh, essentially asking a, a employee to step down uh, willingly. And, and at this point in time, with the resolution and the wording of the resolution, where we were planning on taking further steps, the first question that came to mind was uh, if the city offers its employees an employee assistance program, and then whether or not that that program had been uh, offered to Mayor Ryan. Okay. okay, anybody like to answer that question? Anybody have the information? See? I'm not aware that it has. Right. Is there any other discussion? Is there any other discussion? Seeing none. Roll call, please. And you're doing the uh, report of committee and the resolution. Is that what you're voting on? Yes. Yes. <coughs> okay. Everybody know? Heideman. Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? Nay. No? No. Thank you. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? No. And Hammond? Aye. 14 ayes, two noes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, um, resolution passes. Of course, we already know that I will respectfully refuse to resign the office of mayor. Find my glasses here. I have given everybody this letter as an offering, which I will provide to the press, and hopefully we can move on in the future. Or if the council decides to do otherwise, that would be the council's prerogative. Moving on, report of committee 6, 928 by Public Works recommending filing documents submitting a communication from the board president of Windsor requesting that the berthing agreement for the USS Cannon be modified to the north side of the river beginning just west of the public boat launch. Public Works, we have Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <coughs> I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted and placed on file. Second. Okay, we have a uh, motion and a second to accept and adopt and place on file under discussion. Attorney McLean. Uh, I wasn't at the Public Works Committee meeting, but here again, I guess I would ask the chairman uh, the intent of the committee by recommending the document be accepted and placed on file. Is that to agree with their proposal or not to? Uh, Attorney McLean, that was a previous document that was submitted by WINSA uh, that we had lying over at our committee for a couple of weeks and on the advice of uh, uh, Chad Pelichek from the development office that uh, he said that in public works we should file the document and wait for a new document to come in. Do you need some more clarification? Perhaps Chad could shed some light on that. Chad, would you, <laughs> would you speak on that? Thank you. The reason I said that that document could be filed is because in discussions with the Windsor Group, um, it's their intent to moor the ship on, as originally planned on the 
uh, south side of the river at the Kepsel building until the Sheboygan River dredging project is moved forward. They're looking at working with EPA on some dock wall enhancements on the Lyon side of the river and then at that time they had informed us in a meeting that they would come back to the council requesting for that um, change of location from the south side of the river to the north side. So it was my recommendation at Public Works to file the document and what I understand from Larry Hinkleman of Windsor is that they'll submit a new document at such time. Thanks, Jan. That clarifies it for me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there any further discussion? If there is no further discussion, roll call, please. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, report of Committee 7, 929 by Law and Licensing, recommending that pawnbroker license application number 2832 be denied based upon concerns regarding issues of public safety and protection and the criminal background of the agent's business partners. Law and Licensing, Alderperson Vandeweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Cassandra Gill here tonight? She's not here tonight. Um, based on what we heard earlier, um, I'd like to refer this back to law and licensing. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second um, to accept and adopt. We heard from this gentleman earlier concerning this issue. Um, under discussion. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think um, Alderperson Vanderweel was hoping that we could get this back to law and licensing for further review, so I would uh, make a friendly motion that we move this back to law and licensing versus accepting and adopting it. Second. Oh, okay. We have a motion and a second to refer back to law and licensing for further consideration. Under discussion to refer back. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Back to law and licensing it goes. 930 by law and licensing recommending that beverage operators license application number 9156 be denied based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the licenses activity, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Robert Schrader here? Not here. Please continue. Um, at the committee meeting, we invited him um, to two meetings, and he didn't appear for either of them, so we denied his license. Okay. Any further discussion? If there is no discussion, roll call, please, and I vote would deny the license. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Ann Koth? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 931. <clears throat> By law and licensing, recommending the taxi cab driver's license number application 9157 be denied based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Once again, Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RCB accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Martinez Jackson here tonight? Not here. Please continue. And he did not appear also for two of the meetings that we invited him to, so we denied his license. Under further discussion. There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Matichuk? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? 
Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 932 by law and licensing, recommending that beverage operators license application number 9157. Can we just have that? Yeah, two different licenses. Oh, okay, two different <laughs> licenses. Be denied based upon his criminal record, which makes him ineligible to hold the license, as well as his failure to accu accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Van Der Weel. Move that the RC be accepted and adapted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. And Martinez Jackson, this is a different license he applied for. And again, he didn't appear to both the meetings we invited him to. Under further discussion? There is no further discussion. We'll call, please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Manichek? Aye, aye. <laughs> 16 ayes. Motion carries. <laughs> 933 by law and licensing recommending that Class A fermented malt beverage license application number 2522 TCL photo be denied based upon the agent's failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his Class A fermented malt beverage license application and the committee standards for issuing licenses. Encore, Alderperson Van de Weel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Tu Lee here tonight? He is not here. Please continue. Um, just in 2011, he had 14 separate housing and building code violations. He is a um, property, owns many properties in the city. And some of the violations were for the actual property that he wanted the um, beverage license for. And some of those violations included life safety issues. Okay, thank you, Alderperson Vanderbilt, once again. Any further discussion? There's no further discussion. Roll call, please. Raceler. Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries, 934. By law and licensing, recommending that beverage operators license application number 9199 be denied based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application and his record of violations related to the licensed activity. Alderperson Vanderweel. We're busy. I ask that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Alfredo Avina here? He is not here. He has a long history of alcohol-related violations and a negative recommendation from the police department. Okay, under further discussion. There's no discussion. Roll call, please. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Raisler? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of committees eight. 935 by finance recommending the city purchasing and city finance departments evaluate, produce, and solicit an RFP, RFI, or RFQ for cleaning services at all facilities managed or owned by the city. Alderman Hammond. Sorry, Alderman Vanderweel, it's my turn. <laughs> I move the RCB. Jody's out of breath anyway. <laughs> I move the RCB accept and adopt and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and put upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? No. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? No. And Samson. Aye. 14 ayes, two noes. Motion carries. 936 by finance recommending repealing subs of resolution number 511011 relating to employee required contributions to the Wisconsin retirement system. 
Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage under discussion, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just for clarification for the council, um, prior we had, um, non-reps had a, when they came in, hired after a particular date, they had to pay a certain amount in the Wisconsin retirement system. What we're doing in, act, in, in uh, consideration of Act 10 is just trying to get all of that um, under the same type plan so we don't have multiple people under the same plan. So in case you're wondering what that's for, that's why you see that document coming through. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. And Van Akron? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 937 by finance recommending authorizing an agreement for funding professional services for a habitat restoration project along the Sheboygan River. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Uh, if I may chat, is this the uh, yes. $5 million grant at the end of the river cleanup project, correct? Professional services. Huh? This okay. is for Alderman Hammond, please. This is for the study Here. for um, beginning the restoration project on specific areas of the Sheboygan River um, after the cleanup is done. Very good. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. And Vanderweel? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinance is introduced 10 938 to be referred. 939 by Alderman Sampson amending the zoning map to establish the use district classification of recently annexed property located south of Erie Avenue and west of North 28th Street. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, that's re I'm sorry. That's referred. That's referred okay. to city planning. Yep. Excuse me. All right. Oh, okay. 9-40, I don't need to read these, is referred to PPNS. 941 is referred to PPNS. Sorry about that, Alderman Sampson. Oh, I didn't mean to confuse you. Just confused myself. Matters laid over 11-826, RO number 106-1112 by the city clerk submitting an application for a private wall permit from Blea Yang, 1818 Eisner Avenue. President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of officer be accepted and placed on file. And I can't answer your question if we're granting it or permission or not. So um, I guess you'll have to clarify what it is we're time for me to do here. Say it again. The issue is we're accepting and placing on file, but are we allowing him to do this the well or not? Yes. Okay. And that the well be approved? And then I'll approve it well. <laughs> Second. Thank you, Alder President Rinfleisch, right. <laughs> seconded by <laughs> Vice President Decker. Under discussion? There is no discussion. Roll call, please. We can do it all eyes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And 829, resolution number 431112 by Alderman Hammond, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a modified project agreement between the U.S. EPA. The Wisconsin DNR, the city of Sheboygan, Sheboygan County Pollution Risk Services, and WPS. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. As we all know, this is to do with the uh, phases of the river dredging, which is a good thing, which will be done hopefully by the end of next summer. Under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Belt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heinemann. Aye. Excuse me. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manichuk. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Van Akron. 
Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Percy. Aye. aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, Attorney McLean. 9-42 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Donald Gore, MD, requesting the city paint white crosswalk lines at the north side of the junction of Clement and 3rd Street due to safety issues for people living in the area. Will be referred to public protection and safety. 9-43 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting an application from Christopher Jolitz requesting a waiver of the sex offender residency restrictions in or to move to 2715 North 8th Street. Also referred to PPS. 944 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2012 and June 30, 2013. Referred to law and licensing. 945 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting communication from the State of Wisconsin Department of Corrections requesting a waiver to the sex offender residency restrictions on behalf of Nang Mua to be placed at a transitional living placement. DLP residents located at 1123, 1125 North 14th Street or 931A Michigan Avenue based on availability. Also referred to PPNS. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn in a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.